A few years ago, I decided to quit the priesthood. I dedicated more than 35 years of my life to the Lord, and I followed him and his word blindly. The church became more important than everything to me. It was my home, sanctuary, the place where I felt most at peace. My unconditional love was to God. Not few were the days where I overlooked and neglected my family for him. Then one day my wife got sick. I prayed and prayed. I hoped he would listen. She only lasted five days after the diagnosis. It spread so fast in her body, the doctors said they'd never seen anything like that before. Yet I didn't renounce God. I said that if that was what he wanted, so be it. Two years after that, my daughter had an accident while coming home from school. It was winter. She slipped on the ice and hit her head violently. She passed away two hours later in the hospital. I felt like nothing made sense anymore. I felt like I was being subjected to twisted tests and monstrous things were building up inside of me. I started doubting not only God, but his existence. What kind of a ruthless, wretched, faceless God would allow something like this to happen? What kind of monster that held that power over everything would allow two innocent, beautiful souls to be taken like that. I remember screaming at the skies when I lost my composure. I never asked you for anything. I was your faithful soldier. I spread your word to everyone. Yet you let the two loves of my life die. You took them away from me. Why? If you're out there, give me a sign, an answer. I shouted. Nothing. Fuck you. You fucking coward. I yelled, flipping off the sky and ripping off my collar. That was the last day for me as a priest. Preaching the word of God came to an end at that exact moment. I gave in to drinking. It seemed the only logical thing to do. Alcohol was always considered to be the most effective short-term memory loss enabler, and that's what I wanted. To forget about my misery, just for a few hours. Shortly after that, I found myself wasting away in a different bar every day. And then the unspeakable happened. I learned about the most frightening thing in the world. It was Wednesday night, about 8 o'clock or so. Jack, the bartender who saved my life once after finding me intoxicated and passed out in the park, poured me a double whiskey on the rocks. That's all I was getting for the night. He wouldn't give me any more. He said he didn't want to feel guilty if I died from cirrhosis or any other alcohol consumption-related diseases. How goes it, Jack? I asked, sipping on my drink. Not too bad, Thomas. How about you? I groaned and didn't say anything. I began studying the whiskey. I asked myself why alcohol has such a strong effect on us. Why do we drink it? We do it no matter how we feel. We're sad and depressed, we drink to drown out those bad feelings. And if we're happy, we drink it so we can celebrate important moments in our lives. We also use it when we pour a few drops on the grave of passed away buddies to honor their memory. A man stormed the bar, he almost kicked the doors down. I could feel something was off about him. 
He looked straight at me and I saw fear in his eyes. That shook me to my core. The rather peculiar thing was that every other person in the bar seemed to ignore what had just happened. They carried on with their mundane conversations. I'll have a vodka, please, he told Jack, almost out of breath. I ignored him and carried on sipping my whiskey. There was a sense of impending doom floating in the air. The man had something wrong about him. I wasn't scared of him, but... By what he brought with him. I felt he carried an all-too-heavy burden. I didn't know if it was guilt, fear, sadness, or another thing, but the only thing I knew was that whatever he had to say was, was terrifying. I need to talk to you before I can go, Father. It's coming soon. I can't do anything to stop it. He said, staring me blankly in the eye. He looked so lost, so empty. Defeated, almost. Don't call me that. I stopped being a priest a long time ago. Are you alright? I asked him, seeing his entire body shiver. His hand was shaking violently while he drank. He continued to stare at me, and I felt my fear rising in my throat. There was just a never-ending feeling of deep fear, hopelessness, and wretchedness that this man transmitted. I am sorry, Father. I wish I'd said or did something about the passing of your family. I simply couldn't, the man said, bursting into tears. I am... was... God. I felt shivers run down my spine. Anger and fear took a hold of me, clouding my judgment, and I squeezed the glass so hard that it broke. Listen, man, I don't know who the hell you are, or who sent you here, but I swear I will beat the living hell out of you if you don't leave, I said, instantly judging myself. I was never a violent person. Jack, did you hear what this guy just said? Yeah, he said he wanted a vodka. I gave it to him. He replied. No, after that, man, you didn't hear what he just said a few seconds ago? Jack just gave me a confused stare. Raising an eyebrow. This was getting very strange. It was either they were messing with me or I didn't have a clue what was going on. Only you can hear what I have to say. Now, do you believe me or not? He sobbed. He then grabbed my wrist and pressed hard on it and I saw land burning and there were creatures unknown to me fighting each other and getting killed in a gruesome way. They were pulling each other's eyes out. They were eating each other, flesh and blood were flying in the air. It morbidly decorated the once beautiful land. It looked like one grotesque painting. I heard a metallic scream somewhere in the distance. I was petrified with fear. I froze in place, unable to move. And I looked the man in the eye and screamed, falling off my chair. His grip left a circular burn on my wrist. Jack, what's going on? I cried. You've lost balance and fell, Thomas. Be more careful next time, he said. This wasn't happening. This couldn't be possible. I scanned the room for a quick second and everybody acted like it just fallen out of my chair, like I was drunk. Thomas, I'm sorry for all of this. I wish it could have been different. What I have to say is very important. Please, there is not much time left. They are coming, the man said. I nodded. This was impossible for me to believe. After all these years, and after all I'd been through, God came to me. 
I felt fear clogging my arteries. I felt like a bomb ready to explode. Heaven is burning. It's almost death. Soon to be wiped out of existence. I don't think anything could save it, he said. I just stared at him, dumbfounded. He told me everything and what I learned will haunt me for the rest of my life. When he created heaven, he hid it. He knew there were more gods, some were good, he could have found allies. Others were so evil, so diabolical, they could wipe him and heaven out in a second. And that's why he camouflaged heaven, hell, and our planet as a precautionary measure. He told me heaven was like a paradise. The souls of our dear departed, the ones who did nothing but good in this life, were allowed to ascend there in the afterlife. The angels were not as we all knew them. They had a different appearance. God made them in a way meant to strike the utmost fear in their enemies if there was a battle going on. And there were a lot of battles throughout time. With lesser gods, with the devil, heaven always won, easily so. But not this time. This was absolutely frightening, even for God. I did manage to hide every single soul from heaven to another place I've created. You never knew about it because I never allowed it. A smaller heaven. The endless sanctuary, he said. I stood aghast. I wanted to ask something, but he cut me off before I could pop the question. Yes, your daughter and wife are safe, he assured me. He also told me he created an endless amount of new angels. They were his most powerful soldiers. The Mecha Angels. I'll use the angels against these evil beings. Against the screaming ones, he said in a trembling voice. And one day a deafening scream resounded all across heaven happened a few years ago. Years, by mankind's way of measuring up. There, it was mere minutes. The scream instantly killed some of the angels, turning them to ash. Those who were up high in the ranks tried to fight, but soon lost too. God, God managed to save the souls of the departed and some of the angels, archangels and saints. He hid them in the endless sanctuary. He said he even thought to forgive Lucifer and ask him to join the fight. But it was too late. Before heaven, they destroyed hell. The devil wasn't dead. He vanished. God tried to find him, but didn't manage to do so. Heaven was almost gone. He left it briefly so he could care of the little that he had saved. He told me he even managed in the nick of time to move the tree of life from heaven to the endless sanctuary. If the tree got destroyed... That would be the end of everything. God, heaven, humankind, our planet. He stopped and sighed. When I left, I saw their silhouettes. Slender and tall, piercing and screaming to the heavens. Killing my beautiful creation. My children. It was horrifying to look at. Thomas, I have never been afraid of anything before. This was the first time. Do you know how awful that feels? Yes, I do. You're passing that fear on to me right now. I never even thought this kind of fear even existed, I replied. He gave me the last details about the screaming ones. Those terrified me. I was a statue frozen in place in that bar stool. Their face... It was just a gigantic spiraling mouth. The shiny and pointy teeth kept chattering while the waves of sound and screaming they made obliterated everything in their path. He grabbed my wrist one more time, and then it was taken off into heaven. I saw one of them. It came at me, he started screaming, and I felt my whole body trembling. My skin was falling off, blood pouring on the ground. I saw how it would die, and it was...
was a picture I will never forget in my life. I think that's how I will die if they ever come to Earth. And then God left. Salvaged what he could. He felt like a part of him was murdered, ripped away, and killed in cold blood. Heaven was a screaming bloodbath. You were one of my most faithful servants, Thomas. Your work and devotion never went unnoticed. That's why I chose you today. I could barely find any words to everything he said. I just stood there watching him and telling me this tale of how heaven was almost murdered. I couldn't understand, yet I believed him with every single inch of my mind. You know, each prayer works. When you pray to me, the words you say empower me. They give me strength, make me stronger. You are my most beautiful creation, and I love every single one of you. You have your flaws, but you don't need to be perfect. That's why I made you like this. Is that all we can do to help? I asked. He nodded and let her sigh. He told me that we don't even know how strong the power of prayer is. And before leaving, he asked me to share this with whomever I could. That's why I decided to write it down here. He also told me that the final war against the Screaming Ones will take place in five days. If you start hearing screaming coming from the sky, then I have failed everyone and everything. Your prayers will not work, because I'll be dead, he said right before he left the bar. These past four days have been nerve-wracking. I couldn't sleep because I was so afraid of everything that could happen. Wherever God is, we should all be praying. Pray as much as you can. Because this is the last day. Pray we will not hear screams coming from the sky.